Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Oak Park City Council meeting will begin in 30 seconds. The Oak Park City Council meeting will begin in 30 seconds. This meeting of the Oak Park City Council is called to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, City Clerk Ed Norris, would you call the roll? Mayor McClellan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Here. Council Member Burns. Here. Council Member Rich. Here. Council Member Weiss. Here. Everyone's here. We have a quorum. Uh, item four is approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We've approved the agenda. Item five is the consent agenda. These are routine items that are approved without discussion. Uh, anything can be pulled from this um, uh, for discussion. A, regular council meeting minutes of May 20th, 2019. B, request to appoint Kevin Yee as the representative and David DeCoster as the alternate representative to the SACRA board for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2019. C, payment application number one for the 2018-19 water main replacement project M675 to Macomb Pipelines and Utilities of Sterling Heights, Michigan in the amount of $184,979.88. <clears throat> D, payment application number five for the 2000. 1845th District Court Renovation Project M684 to Frank Rewald and Sons, Incorporated for the amount of $378,958.45. E, request to declare the listed vehicles surplus to be sold by sealed bid, public auction, or by disposal at the lowest expense to the city in accordance with city policy. F, Library Board meeting minutes of April 16th, 2019. G, Beautification Advisory Commission meeting minutes of April 16th. H, Corridor Improvement Authority Board meeting minutes of March 21st. Uh, I, request to cancel the June 10th Planning Commission meeting. Due to lack of business, J licenses new and renewals is submitted for June 3rd. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Um, a roll call, please. Council Member Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Council Member Rich. Yes. Council Member Weiss. Yes. yes. What part of the agenda can you add that to? Uh, thank you. Uh, motion carried. We have elected officials. Um, we have two county commissioners, Nancy Quarles. Uh, would you like to start? And um, welcome and thank you for coming. Is that on? Is there a green light on that one? Yes, ah, so now. <laughs> good. Okay. Again, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, Council, and citizens. I really appreciate the opportunity to just uh, bring you all 
uh, information at the county as well as uh, what Commissioner Zach will be adding. Uh, two things I would like to mention, which is ironic, I, as, as I was reading your agenda earlier, they're appearing on there. The first one is the kickoff of the um, safety with guns. And uh, again, I just want to remind everyone that the county is giving away gun locks so that we can ensure that we have safe uh, gun protection and people are keeping guns uh, safe in their homes. And uh, just a reminder, the last time I was here uh, was discussion about uh, the need for employees, particularly summer and temporary employees for the park and rec. Uh, we still need those employees, so if anyone is looking for a position, if they want to work with parks and recreation, and it, there are many different types of jobs from program management, lifeguards, uh, park assistants, please sign on to the oakgov.com parks and recreation and um, you all have an opportunity to fill out an application and uh, work in our beautiful parks that we have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we are divided into two county commission districts. Um, Helene Zack is also here to Add some items. Good e evening, everybody. And just to clarify for our audience, so yes, there are two county commissioners that represent Oak Park. I have the east part of Oak Park, 8 mile to 10 mile east of Coolidge, and Nancy Quarles, Commissioner Quarles, has the rest of Oak Park. And we serve in the same caucus and, and work collaboratively together. So, and we check that we're not talking about the same things. So one of the things that I get to do as county commissioner is I serve on the Southeast Michigan Council <coughs> Government Board, SEMCOG. And they are doing lots of wonderful initiatives for us as residents here. They do have this app called the Park Finder and you can add it to your phone if you have a smartphone or you can go online <coughs> and you can, they've mapped all these parks in their seven county region, whether it be local, whether it be county. So you can go looking for parks and they're even doing 360 degree photography so you can get an online like Google Earth pictures of what that park is before you go see them, which I think is really wonderful. And their latest initiatives, they're working on two different initiatives beyond that. And one is walk by bikedrivesafe.org and I have materials that I'm going to leave here. Did you know that there was a state law that says that cars need to pull over three feet away from bicycle riders, you know, so that you're not interfering? I didn't know that. And so they're really promoting safe, bike safe initiatives. And so become familiar. There's a website that you can look up. Another initiative that they just started and they delivered me two bags of things is something called One Water. Mm -hmm. And in Macomb County, there was a big sinkhole a couple years ago. And one of the reasons for that sinkhole was that they had this huge fat globule, you know, that was, you know, like this monster bit of fat that helped destroy the pipes and everything. So the One Water Initiative is trying to get us to use our storm water systems, our pipes appropriately. For example, it's a fat trapper bag so that you put fat in there rather than down your pipes. Um, this is dog, you know, bags for if you're walking your dog that you don't put dog droppings into our sewer systems because that will clog and other initiatives. So it's called One Water. You can find more information, SEMCOG. I'm going to leave a bag of materials that people can help themselves to. Free dog things, free water bottles, and so forth. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you both Thank you. for coming. Two for the price of one. Um... Mm -hmm.
Any other elected officials? Okay. Um, next we have item 7A. Item 7A is a resolution celebrating the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, giving women the right to vote. And um, my grandmother and her sister uh, were admitted to Johns Hopkins University Medical School in 1895 and graduated well-to-do white educated women had 20 years before they could vote because when they graduated medical school they could not vote so this right is not anything that we've had for all that much time and um, we need to protect the right for women to vote and um, uh, we need um, we do have let's see Mm -hmm. We have a resolution um, celebrating this 100th anniversary of the ratification. Um, is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I, I have uh, a comment. Yes. Wouldn't it be fitting if Ken and I vote against this and we get outvoted by the women? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> There's an <laughs> I have a comment now. You have to go home tonight. <laughs> and you have to come back Solomon, to the city council meeting. I'll point out something, Madam Mayor, to Solomon. <laughs> the, I'll point out something to Solomon. The fourth paragraph of the resolution talks about how on June 10, 1919, women here in Michigan cast their vote when Michigan became the second state to ratify the 19th Amendment. But what's not said in here, Solomon, is that the year before, in 1918, men in Michigan voted to give women the vote in this state. And then for the federal elections, it was in 1919. So we've been forward looking for many years. So we've already voted on this, Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't you guys um, support it in second instead of letting me and Regina do it? I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're having way too much fun here. We have the right All now. We those don't have to wait favor. for their permission. Okay. <laughs> right. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any Mayor. opposed? All right. This Madam motion carries. I just wanted to mention it should be duly noted that I kept my mouth shut as I'm supposed to <laughs> during that entire conversation. A wise man. Uh, item B is a resolution declaring June 7th National Gun Violence Awareness Day in the city of Oak Park. And um, this uh, strikes kind of close to home because the Virginia Beach massacre killed city workers in their place of work. And that touched all of us who work at the city. So um, is there a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. Second. So we have Regina, Regina supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion carries. And just um, mention that city council members are wearing the orange. Oh, yes. Um, we are wearing orange today. Uh, orange earrings, orange scarf, <laughs> orange tie, thank you. Um, uh, to orange support stuff. this. No <laughs> one is in favor of gun violence, naturally. Um, uh, probably it can be treated as a public health issue the way cars we we don't stop cars from being manufactured but we do regulate who can drive and under what conditions and that kind of thing I think that's the future of how we come together on this issue instead of just banging heads and being apart but um, moving on um, special licenses. That puts us at item 10A. This is a special event request 
and a waiver of fee by a nonprofit, the First Baptist Church of Oak Park, 24201 Coolidge, for a community outreach event to be held on June 15, 2019, from 11 in the morning until 3. Uh, and I think our public safety um, ice cream truck and fire truck are going to be there. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful event. Um, we need uh, a motion to approve this request and waiver of fee. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Item 10B is another special event request and waiver of fee by another nonprofit is East Oak Park Neighborhood Association for their annual picnic in Best Park on July 20th, 2019. We need a motion and a second. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. A discussion? Um, Madam Mayor. Yes, please. I just want to say this is this is my neck of the woods. I'm part of, um, uh, was a member of the East Oak Park Neighborhood Association before I was on the on the City Council, and um, this is an event that's open to everyone in the city. Open they, to everyone in the they city. They encourage people to attend. And last year they had fresh corn. Yeah. Just. I don't saying. know what the plan is in this year, but the food's always good. So July 20th, everyone's welcome All at right, Best Park. Great. Thank you. Even though it says no open to the public, it actually is. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a public event. It's a public event. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. We are on <clears throat> item 12A. This is um, a request to award the bid for the 2018 program year yard services contract M702 to Oakland Livingston Human Service Agency of Pontiac, Michigan. First, we need um, a motion to award the bid. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. And can we have someone just, ah. Good evening, Mayor. To mention uh, angels and you can hear the flutter of their mm -hmm. wings. Thank you. This is uh, Director Barrett. As stated before you is a request to award a bid to OSHA for the uh, 2018 program year yard services. Uh, at the May 6th regular meeting, City of Oak Park Council requested the bid for the 2018 program. On Tuesday, May 14th, two bids were received. After the bid, expert lawn care uh, rescinded their bid. They did not understand the scope of the project. Um, the only remaining bidder is OSHA, Oakland Livingston Huma Human Service Agency submitted a bid to provide the requested services and the administration of the 2018 program year yard services contract. With OSHA administering the 2018 uh, yard services contract, they will offer additional services to our seniors, including snow removal, lawn cuts, refrigerator replacement, and the great rake yard cleanup program. Wonderful. As recommended, City Council award the bid for the 2018 program year yard services contract M702 to Oakland Livingston Human Service Agency of Pontiac, Michigan. Funding is available in the CDBG account. Do we have a, do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yes. We have a motion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, this we have used these people before. Yes. And it's a nonprofit organization. And can you tell us just a little bit about what they what they provide that makes it a good deal? Well, with OSHA administering the pro program, is they, they can leverage our CDBG funds to have our seniors on their list to have them available for the uh, Great Lake Great Rake program. Uh, they got weatherization programs, yard cleanup services, and uh, refrigerator replacement programs. Um, they're just a great partner to work with to uh, help our seniors out. And we've used them before. Yes. I just have one question. Yes. Now, I. I I believe you said that expert lawn care rescinded their bid? Yes. And I'm looking at the administrative fees. <coughs> Oakland, Livingston, their administrative fees are almost twice as much as expert lawn care. Do you know what goes into the administrative fees that makes it so expensive? Nope. The max they can uh, bid on that is 15%, and it is the gross amount of the work they're doing is uh, 
income qualifying the senior citizens and, and maintaining all of our paperwork and maintaining all the regulations that HUD requires to have for the competitive bidding for the program. Uh, so it is a extremely humongous amount of work they do for the 15%. Uh, and to note again that expert lawn care uh, put this bid together according to them within the last hours before and did not know they were bidding to administer a federally funded program mm -hmm. uh, and just threw a, I think they just threw a number out there and asked to rescind their bid. Thank you. Are we ready to vote? Our roll call please. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, next item 13A is a first reading of an ordinance to amend Chapter 82, Utilities, Code of Ordinances of the City of Oak Park, Michigan, by amending Section 82.313, Determination, set the rates and charges to be imposed for the consumption and use of water and sewer services. Uh, we need a motion to approve the first reading. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Um, can someone speak to this? Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a comment about yes, this, please. if I may. Um, this, our water rates have been slowly increasing pretty much for the last several years uh, based on a study that was done by one of the most renowned accounting firms out there, Plant Moran. Um, we have been implementing the uh, increases more slowly than they recommended and at a slower rate, at a lower rate than they recommended because we're trying to do this with as much ease as possible. Go if we would have done this the way they recommended us to do it, it would have been a much larger raise, much, a much, much larger increase, much quicker. Um, that's the comment that I'd like to make. And Thank I didn't you. mean to take away <laughs> no one, wh what you were going to say. say really. <laughs> there's nothing really st left to say, but good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Um, I can just read over um, what the rates are increasing for the uh, reading uh, viewers uh, and the uh, <coughs> residents out here um, the first reading of the um, amend the first reading of the amending of the utility ordinance chapter 82 section 82 313 to reflect the changes in the various utility rates and their effective dates as presented in the proposed uh, fiscal year 2019-20 budget that was approved on May 20th 2019 and so in summary we're just uh, uh, asking to adjust the water rate for the water costs including the purchase from um, the Great Lakes Water Authority and adjust the sewer rates for the increased sewer costs, including those from the Oakland County Drain Commissioner. The amendment adjusts Article 5 rates and charges of Chapter 82, utilities of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Oak Park in Section 82.313 to reflect a change in the water rate from $41.70 per thousand cubic feet to $42.53 per thousand cubic feet and a change in the sewer rate from $95.80 per thousand cubic feet to $105.38 per cubic feet. And subsection B, to adjust the high strength surcharges to reflect the changes from the Great Lake Water Authority and Oakland County Drain Commissioner, and also adjust the effective dates of the various utility rates. The recommended action is recommended that the City Council receive the amended ordinance and place it on the agenda for the June 17, 2019 Council meeting for the second reading. We need a motion to receive. So moved. Wait, don't we have to? Don't we have to vote? What are we in? Yeah, we, we made a motion oh, to approve. Then. Motion to approve. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Can I make one more comment, please? Yes, please. I just want everybody to know this, not just the people here, but the people watching at home and anybody who watches this later. <coughs> this is not to cover any portion of any lawsuit. We're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to be very clear about that. I'll make a comment as well. Yes, please. Yeah, this, these rate increases, have, as we have been discussing since last year, year before last, they will continue, unfortunately, for the next two years. But as we stated earlier, these rate increases are paramount to the city in regards to we aren't able to cover the entire cost. So in breaking down the cost, passing it along to the residents, it's been done over these five years. Just wanted to let you know that. Thank and it's affecting everyone in Oak Park, myself included. I don't like it, but I understand it. So I'm agreeing to it. Got to do what we got to do. And still, our rates 
are not as high as other municipalities. Just keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Thank you. Are we ready to vote then? Um, uh, this is to receive, do, do we need a roll call for this one? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Motion carried. <clears throat> First reading. Um, and I think what we talked about earlier, that one water thing for for ways that we can protect our water um, is something that we'll be putting out, our communications department will be putting out and making making clear to everyone um, ways that we can help. Uh, City Attorney, is there any report for tonight? No report, thank you, Madam Mayor. City Manager, Eric Tungay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, 15A, I would like to call Director Van Vleck to the podium, please. She is our Youth Assistance Board uh, aficionado. So Crystal, take it away. All right, good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, what you have in front of you now is an appointment of new members to the Oak Park Youth Assistance Board. So um, you, you may have remembered I was up here in front of you several months ago um, about the, origin, the original appointments. The Oakland County Youth Assistance Program is administered through the Oakland County Circuit Court Family Division and consists of local youth assistance offices in Oakland County communities through a tri-sponsorship tri agreement between the circuit court, local municipalities, and the local school districts. The Oak Park Youth Assistance Program was created in 1983 by the Oakland County Circuit Court and includes the following sponsors, the City of Oak Park, the Oak Park School District, and the Charter Township of Royal Oak. Membership eligibility includes civic leaders, organizational and governmental persons, professional people, and individuals interested in serving youth in the area covered by the City of Oak Park and the Oak Park School District. After new members are approved by the Oak Park Youth Assistance Board, they must then be presented to the local sponsors for approval. Upon acceptance by the local sponsors, they must then be sent to the Oakland County Circuit Court judges for approval and formal appointment to the board. So at this point in time, as one of the local sponsors, um, we are asking you to approve our appointments that we made. So the Oak Park Youth Assistance has appointed Ted Kozlowski and Richard Halperin to the board and is asking for your um, approval of, this, of these appointments. And can you give us just a um, small bio of these people? So the people Yeah, listening. so I can. Ted Kozlowski is a retired police officer here and he now works um, in our records department. And he has been a part, he was actually a past president of this board. Um, years ago and has been participating in the annual pancake breakfast as you guys might all know which is hosted or sponsored by the um, Oak Park Youth Assistance and he's been doing that for years. Um, Richard Halperin amongst many things is a magistrate at the 45th District Court. Um, he's also a board member of the Tri-Community Coalition um, and is just philanthropic all around. Thank you so much. Um, so we um, Need a motion to approve the appointments? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> okay, 15B, uh, Crystal. This is one for you too. <laughs> so this is um, a cost participation agreement with Oakland County for the Local Road Improvement Matching Fund Pilot Program, also known as LRIP Grant. Um, if you remember a few years back, we were given this grant to help us fund the pocket parks. Um, this year we applied again and were um, awarded the grant money. Um, the Oakland County Board of Commissioners established the pilot load, local road improvement matching fund program for the purposes of improving economic development in Oakland County cities and villages. The city submitted a grant application to assist with surface improvements to Coolidge Highway between 8 mile and 11 mile and it was awarded $41,329. As a requirement of the grant, the city must match at least 50% of this grant award. The attached resolution is a cost participation agreement stating that the city agrees with the terms of the grant award and is a requirement in order for the county to disperse the award to the city. The city has budgeted this grant match as part of the city's annual concrete repair replacement program, um, which is in the water sewer fund and local streets fund for the fiscal year 2019-2020. And... Um, uh, 
We need a motion for City Council to approve the cost participation agreement. Moved. Support. Moved and supported. Um, in short, what are they doing to Coolidge? So every year, we have an annual program where um, the Department of Public Works looks at the panels on throughout the streets. <laughs> Kevin might be getting up to explain this a little bit better. Um, but we do this annually, and we actually were just given a little bit more money to help with it. So if you can yeah. expand. No, I think that's perfectly stated. Um, Coolidge generally is in pretty good condition, but there are some places where there are some payment failures, and we could do some isolated patching um, for this amount of money, and I think we would uh, preserve the road for a lot longer period of time, and it would be in, in great condition. So I think it fits uh, the um, intent of the the grant um, very well. Wonderful. Thank you. Nice, nice to get um, to get grant funding. Uh, are we ready to vote? Approve the cost per. Where are we now? The D vote. Thank you. Roll call, please. Thanks. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, 15C, I'd like to call our finance director, Sandra Crawford, back to the podium yes. to discuss. <coughs> Hello again. Hello again. <laughs> Good evening. Okay, item 15C is the uh, special assessment district number Holler six. a little louder. Okay, item 15C is the special assessment district number 682 and 683 for the unpaid delinquent exception recommended recommendations. At the city council meeting of May 6, 2019, the city council adopted the special assessment resolution number nine to confirm the role with the exceptions of the 10, which are attached which were removed temporarily for further review. City Council also adopted the special assessment resolution number 10, setting the due date of June 14, 2019, together with a penalty of 10% for special assessment district number 682, delinquent miscellaneous concrete repair, and special assessment district number 683 for delinquent property blight. The recommended action. It is recommended that the unpaid invoices belonging to the following parcels be restored to the Special Assessment District number 682 along with the original 10% penalty. And the uh, parcel numbers are 52-2530-303-065 for the address of 15160 Kenwood and parcel number 52-2530-355-002 for property address 15161 Kenwood and the following parcels be restored to the special assessment district number 683 along with the original 10 percent penalty and that is parcel number 52-2532-228-018 property address is 10031 Corning property number 52-2529-302-013 property address 13331 Oak Park Boulevard Parcel number 52252920001, property address 24140 Onita, 52530227022, property address 24071 West Hampton, parcel 52252927009, property address 24200 Majestic, parcel 2520, excuse me, 52259 377-021, property address 12751 Rosemary, and 5225-31-126-016, property address 22000 Stratford. It is also recommended that the invoices belonging to the following parcel be removed from the Special Assessment District number 683 along with the original 10% penalty as the invoice has been paid. And that property ad, uh, parcel number is 52252927800924200 Majestic, specifically for invoice number 00006965. Okay. Um, we have a motion to receive and approve these exceptions. So moved. Second. Um, do we need a roll call? I have a question. I have a question. Thanks. We have a question. Go ahead. Um, so just for clarification, the Majestic property, uh, parcel 5225292780092400 mm -hmm. Majestic Street, um, 
It's being added to the special district 80, 683, but also removed. Yes, it had two invoices outstanding, and one of them was paid and the other one was not. Okay. So the invoice that was paid is being removed, and the one that was not paid is being added. That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have, I have a question. Yep. Um, when there's a uh, <coughs> grass that's not cut longer than, it, than it's supposed to be, uh, what inches. We, uh, well, right, longer than eight inches, and then a warning, and then ultimately um, the grass being cut. What do we charge, and how do we set that rate? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Councilman. What do we charge to, to cut somebody's grass, and how do we come up with that rate? Our rates are divided by the, it's all divided by the uh, hours or the minutes, and there's a quarterly breakdown by the employees that are out there, the machinery that's being used, and I believe it's a 10% administrative cost to help pay for the code and the admin fee to uh, invoice and charge individuals. So what is, do, do you know what it costs? For, around for a long bucks, it right. all depends on the amount of time they are out on site. Um, it's not a rate that a resident wants to pay, but it's the rates that we are charging to cover our costs. So it's only covering our costs? Plus the, well, yes. Uh, plus With the 10%, the, right, which is 10%. also covering our costs. Okay, I think so. It's like average, like $80, $85. Is that right? Around average, about, about 80, 80 $85. Dollars. Right around? I said it varies. I mean, but, you know, typically it's going to be around $100 or so. I, I have a question about this. I'm, I'm not trying to be confrontational or anything, but I do have a legitimate question. I get my cut grass by some people. They have equipment. They come out with their people. They cut my lawn. They, make a, they make a profit yeah. charging me way less than that. Can you just explain to me how it is that to cover our costs it takes $80 and to make a profit? Kevin, you want to answer. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually our DBW forces that come out and do the work, and that's why Kevin's stepping up. But it's um, we got to we got to load our equipment and we go out there. We're not we're really we're not in the grass mowing company to do these individual lawns, and it's not a service we really want to be doing. We're, we have these great big lawn mowers that go out and cut uh, our large parks and so forth, and it, it's the cost. <laughs> so so can I can I interject? Um, <laughs> Kevin, could you just give us a general sense of, I mean, it's, it's when you're paying um, city staff, you're paying, most likely paying prevailing wage for those services, but we can, we can follow up with a better breakdown than that, but can you give us a general sense of what goes into us determining how we're offsetting our costs? Yes, we do that? absolutely. So we, uh, again, um, as uh, Director Barrett had stated, um, we load our equipment up, we get our code orders, and we actually charge by the minute, so we keep track of the minutes we're at each location. We take timestamp photos before and after. When we go to these lawns, these aren't your typical lawns as you have, are having a service cut your lawns that are probably using seasonal, um, you know, seasonal folks that are not prevailing wage. And they're cutting it when it's in a, a desirable or ideal condition, right? We're going out to lawns that are very long. We have to walk the lawns first to make sure there's nothing in there that'll damage our equipment, which often there's sticks and debris or things like that in the lawn. So we have to walk the lawn, make sure we clean, it. there's nothing that's gonna ruin our equipment. And then we have to cut the lawn and many times cut it more than once because it's so long and um, we don't wanna create a hay field there either. And it has to be cut in a neat, you know, we try to keep it in a neat so condition. We blow everything off and we try to maintain it. Yes, sir. So Director Barrett, when we talk about the 10%, um, why do we do that? Those are to cover the fees that aren't put in at an hourly rate into the invoice formula to cover the administration cost of uh, preparing the invoice. Uh, the code department's going out there uh, on two different visits. They're going to write original notice, and then they're going to go back and verify if it's been cut yet, and then they're going to take the time to send an order down to the DPW. So the 10% the in other words barely covers that Remember, Rob's staff has had to have received a, a blight violation or administrated a blight violation that ultimately ends up several steps down the road to DPW staff going out and cutting it. Um, so it's more than justified, I guess. And if I may, at. we also have our foreman who receives them, prints them out. There's no, we don't charge any time for that. That's part of the administrative fee. And then they bring the photos in from uh, before and after. Our um, clerical staff has to organize those photos, put them into files, make sure that everything, all the records are kept up. So there is a lot that goes into it. And the administrative fee of 10%, actually, I, I would concur. I don't think it covers even come close to what our real costs are. 
I'm glad you raised that because I think that a lot of people have that question. I and have I'm, that question. I'm glad you explained it um, because he's probably not the only person that thought that. Thank you. Okay. It's also a deterrent, deterrent so that you don't have the city coming out to cut your lawn. That's not the city business. So of course they're not in the business to come out and cut residential lawns. It takes away from their work for the day that they're scheduled to do. We also have to accommodate their hourly rate of pay and as the city manager mentioned, the administrative costs. So hopefully I think more or less, I mean more than anything, the high price is a deterrent because you can pay somebody $25 to come in and cut your back in front instead of having the city come out to do it. And he's right, it takes it cause, because it happened to me. <laughs> the city, they didn't come out and do it, but I got a citation. So I had to um, get on the ball and uh, get the lawn cut. I didn't want to pay the city. I think my estimate was like $85 and I stay in a small house. So I can imagine if someone lives on a corner but it needs to be done because it helps with the city and it helps the city stay beautiful. And what we hope, of course, is that you get it done inexpensively uh, for the $25 or whatever and, uh, and we don't yeah. have to do it. We're hoping that you will do that. We're not, uh, it's a small price we're not looking pay. for business. Yeah. I didn't realize how much work goes into it, so yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Yeah, very very informative. Industrial Thank size you very lawnmowers. And Madam Mayor, uh, yes. I just think it, at this point it might be worth noting too is that we are only billing for our costs on these invoices. That it is uh, a civil infraction according to our ordinance, and we do not issue tickets or do anything punitive uh, unless somebody's habitual. And typically, after we cut their grass a few times, they learn to hire a service, and we are not. We have never issued a civil infraction ticket for cutting the grass. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Where are we? Fifteenth C. We have to vote. Okay. Um, uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Motion carried. Director Crawford, 15D, and I would just like to point out that 15D includes mar the March 31 and December 31, 2018 uh, quarterly investment reports. Yes. For your um, reading, um, I will just review the third quarter investment report. And this report includes a description of each investment, the type, the market and book values, and the current yield to maturity, interest, and the number of days to maturity. The third quarter investment report showed the total citywide cash and investments of $23,687,273, which is market value, including the operating account of $4,000. $290,747, excluding outstanding checks or other adjustments. The short-term investments in the Oakland County investment pool of $6,867,494 and a money market account of $3,618 and commercial paper of $2,351,942 and long-term investments totaling $10,173,000 $472. The city has maximized investment return on short-term cash by utilizing the Oakland County investment pool and minimizing the amount maintained in the checking account and daily depository accounts. Investment income for the months of January through March 2019 totaled $174,162. During the third quarter, the Federal Reserve did not increase the interest rates and has hinted that not only will they not be increasing them but could be decreasing the rates over the next year. As a result, the city has shifted new investments from long-term municipal bonds and government securities to short-term commercial paper and certificate of deposits. This shift will help reduce the risk from interest rate changes while still obtaining a rate of return of 2 to 2.75 percent annually on these types of investments. The city also continues to evaluate the longer-term investments for possible sale before maturity if the interest rate and market rate values make it prudent to do so. Um, we need a motion to receive and file. So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item 15E, the quarterly investment 
financial, re I'm sorry, the quarterly financial report for the period ending March 31st, 2019. Through the third quarter, generally revenues and expenditures should represent 75% of the annual budget. The total revenues through the third quarter total approximately $17.8 million, representing approximately 85% of the annual budget. Overall, revenues are on track with the budget with the following notes. Property tax revenue, which is city property tax levies, are billed July 1st and payable in full without penalty by August 31st, 2018. And as of the end of the third quarter, approximately 96% of the tax bills have been paid. A small portion of the PA 345 property tax levy was billed in December 1st, 2018. Any unpaid real property taxes will be purchased by the city, will be purchased from the city by Oakland County in May of 2019. Property tax revenue is the primary reason for the overall revenues that are 85% to date. The inter intergovernmental governmental revenue, which is state revenue sharing, the city receives six bi-monthly payments annually for state shared revenue. The third quarter report reflects the three fiscal 2018-19 payments totaling $1,804,033. As of the August 31st, 2018 payment by statute is included in part of the June 2013-18 revenues, which was the last fiscal year. The city will receive the three remaining payments on April 30th, June 30th, and August 31st of this year related to the current fiscal year. The estimated annual revenue included in the budget totals $3,487,480. Fines and forfeiture revenue received from the 45th District Court is budgeted at $1,999,800, of which $1,535,168, or 77% percent was received through the third quarter. The revenue received is used to offset a portion of the court's operating costs. The expenditures, the totals through the third quarter approximately $14.6 million represents approximately 69 percent of the annual budget. Overall departmental expenditure budgets are on track with the following items of note and this is for departments that would be over 75 percent. The prosecuting department attorney's department is at about 83% for the third quarter due to that 10 of their 12 annual contract payments have been paid. But the overall net budget for the department is in line with the current annual projections. The elections department is at 80% for the third quarter due to 100% of the two elections budgeted that were in August and November of last year expenses have been expensed. The finance department is at 77%, which is slightly over due to the completion of the fiscal year 17-18 audit and 100% of those expenses have been expensed. The Public Safety K-9 Department is at 79%, which is slightly over due to an increase in the dental expenses over the budgeted amount. But the overall net budget of the department is in line with the annual budget projections. The Department of Public Works Administration Department is at 86% due to the increase in some insurance expenses over the budgeted amount and less allocations to other funds to date but the city anticipates the cost allocations in the next quarter to keep the budget on track. So the overall general fund operations are in line with the annual budget for the third quarter. The projected fund balance remains at the targeted level of 19% of annual expenditures. Next council meeting, I will be bringing you the fourth quarter and the projections of any budget amendments that we may need to do for the fiscal year of 2018-19. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, is there a motion to receive and file the quarterly financial report? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Discussion? Questions? Yes. I just want to say that I uh, really appreciate the level of detail that you put into this report. Mm -hmm. So it's like just very, instead of just looking at numbers, you very clearly spell out where things are over and under and where we're at. And thank you for all the detail that you put into your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our, um, uh, all those in favor of receiving and filing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> okay. Uh, Assistant City Manager uh, Kevin Yee, if you could join me at the podium for 15F. And then I was also hoping, totally aside from that, you could give a brief update on the court renovation project. Because I know we talked about it earlier, but we didn't really talk about it. So. Okay. Absolutely. 
um, attached to our proposed change order number two and payment application number three for the 2018-19 miscellaneous concrete repair project, M682. The project repairs damaged concrete from water main breaks, sewer repairs, and other <coughs> deteriorated sections throughout the city. The proposed change order is for removal of the islands on the 11 mile road parking lot at an amount of $22,439.44. Concrete pad for the mogul bike stations, $4,126.70. And additional work that will be special assessed, which totals $20,360.47. The project is approximately 95% complete. It is recommended that the proposed change order number two for the 2018-19 miscellaneous concrete repair project M682 to Mattioli Cement Company be approved for the amount of $32,027.88. It is further recommended that payment application number three for the same be approved in the amount of $62,198.37. Funding is available in the Water and Sewer Fund, Local Street Fund, General Fund, and Public Improvement Fund for this project. Um, motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions for the director? Hearing none. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Motion carried. And we're okay. going to discuss where we are in the court. Absolutely. So the court project is moving along very well. Um, Rewald has been um, diligently working on, on that project as they had on the building that we're sitting in now. Um, they have removed, if, as you probably noticed, they've removed the second floor, replaced all the HVAC units. They have um, are getting nearly, they're nearly complete renovating, completely renovating uh, courtroom one, which was in deplorable condition. Um, and they're uh, replacing the roof um, a as we speak. And they'll be replacing the roof. You'll see the materials in the parking lot, replacing the roofs here in the next uh, couple weeks. After they're done with that, they will be replacing the roof, or sections of the roof um, on the library and community center as well. There are materials over there, if you've noticed wow. the, the stock Wondered what those of white covered. Big pallets of materials, correct, mm -hmm. out there. So they're, they're doing a great job, of course, as you're going through, especially a renovation project. Um, and we will have some uh, change orders come before you in the future here. But when we were renovating courtroom one, initially we, hadn't re uh, we weren't going to replace the ceiling tiles and things like that. But as you start making everything else look nicer, they kind of stand out as being older and needing to be replaced. So there are things like that that will continue to kind of come up. And we've worked with the court on that. It is in their budget. And we anticipate not going over their budget. But there will be some things in the um, upcoming here that as we've gone through the project, they've added some different um, uh, sound um, uh, soundproofing things in the courtroom so there isn't echoes and things like that. So, you know, we're continuing to, to monitor it closely and work with the, the court on that. And um, we meet weekly and we're very diligent about, you know, how we're going through and progressing with the project. When do you expect uh, it will be completed? Um, I would suspect we're probably a couple months out. A couple months, well. Wow. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor? Yes. While you're up here, can I ask for another update? Is that all right? Yeah, I think so. Um, Nine Mile, there's lots of barrels. Do we lots. know what's happening? <laughs> yes, there are lots of barrels on Nine Mile Road. So they're just getting started. Um, and, you know, we have a, a few months of construction between the um, Nine Mile Road project and also the pocket parks that are that are happening there, both the same contractor, as, as you know. And um, we have a, a few months. We have a good part of the summer that we're going to be under construction there. They're working on the paths and grading and things like that right now, um, and you know, doing some of the curb work and removals and, and stuff like that. So um, we have we have some we have some time. We have some construction uh, um, issues with with that, but I think they're going to move uh, diligently through it, and and I anticipate by the end of the summer um, things will be buttoning up, looking good over there. Where can we get figures on how much is grant funded, uh, how much the city paid for, uh, that kind of thing? That question came up, and I wasn't sure where those figures could be found. So the, I, th I think I reported at the okay. last meeting um, that the um, bids came in quite a bit higher. The state did agree to extend our 70% funding for that project. Unfortunately, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head for that, but mm -hmm. I will report back at the next council meeting what those numbers are. But the good thing is, is that the state did agree to extend the 70% funding for anything that was over um, bid amount. So we so did the capture the state funding, pays so. 
um, 70 percent and we pay 30 percent correct so yeah we're paying 30 cents on the dollar for the improvements that are going on out there on the nine mile road road diet project yeah. and the same with the pocket parks the pocket parks have a different levels of um, different levels of funding and we went through that at a, a workshop prior and again I don't have those numbers off the top but we did have fundings as um, uh, Director Van Vleck had mentioned through that same grant that we're doing repairs on Coolidge we got money for the pocket parks and we're looking at some other funding mechanisms as well thank you so much well we grilled you pretty good up here yeah. <laughs> poor guy <coughs> I think now it's the uh, director of public safety's turn to be grilled I think mm -hmm. <laughs> comes with the territory right uh, director Cooper if you could join me for 15 G please uh, good evening city manager mayor and council I come before you with a request for a traffic control order uh, number 160 section 1.19 1. uh, uh, due to several complaints from neighbors in the area of Meadowlark and Saratoga streets uh, there was a transportation improvement association uh, survey evaluation that was done uh, for Meadowlark Street and the uh, Saratoga intersection the objective was to determine if the yield control sign is appropriate at that intersection uh, the field evaluation included 24-hour vehicular approach counts an examination of the crash history uh, and a field visit of the site the recommendation from TIA determined that the yield control for East West Saratoga Street should be removed and a stop control sign uh, should be installed for the southbound approach uh, as well as a cross traffic does not stop plaque should be installed under that stop sign uh, in addition cross uh, walk markings and a stop bar recommended for that area as well so I'm coming before uh, council tonight asking for approval uh, and to adopt the traffic control order number 160 section 1.19 and implement the recommendations spelled out by the tra uh, Transportation Improvement Association. Okay, uh, we need a motion to approve. So moved. Support. Uh, who supported? <coughs> I did. Uh, okay. Uh, moved and supported. Uh, questions? Yes. Uh, what's a stop bar? I'm sorry? What is a stop bar? Uh, I think, are you talking about the, the plaque? It's at the end. It says crosswalk markings and a stop bar are recommended. I'm not actually familiar with, with the stop bar. Like I said, the stop plaque. Um, I'm familiar with those with the little placards right up under the stop sign. It actually says four-way uh, traffic does not stop for four-way crossing. But I would have to refer back to uh, the Traffic Improvement Association. The city engineer and the uh, city manager, assistant city manager, might know what that is. <laughs> Isn't that that? Yes, thank that you. So a stop bar would be a white bar that is okay. on the lane, the side of traffic that you travel on that would identify where you're supposed to stop for that stop sign. Got okay. it, thank you. Thank you, sir. It's on the road then. <coughs> okay. Um, where are we? Did we vote? No, we didn't. Any other questions? There's so many of these traffic issues. I think having a committee look into it and come up with something global for the whole city would be helpful. And uh, thank you. No problem. You're more than welcome. <clears throat> We're ready to vote. Mayor McClellan. Ma yes. Mayor McClellan. Yep. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. I kind of appreciate that cross traffic doesn't stop sign sometimes when you come to a stop you assume it's a four-way stop and having that there to explain that it's just you that stop in those other people aren't I think is very helpful it makes it a little safer on that corner always glad to see that thank you okay uh, director Maroney 15 H and I please <clears throat> good evening mayor mayor pro tem and city council um, 15H is our tax foreclosed properties that we received from Oakland County. We received our list um, early last week. So in front of you is a resolution to purchase all of these properties <coughs> as we have the last four years in our tax foreclosure program. Um, and the third party that I recommend in the second part um, will then we'll be selling them to them and they'll pay an admin fee for us to administer this program. 
There is one property that we're going to hold because it may be redeemed in Oakland County, but we've put it on the list here. So if it does fall through and they don't pay their taxes, then we will purchase it. So moved. So we need a resolution approving this purchase? Correct. Second. Do we have Ken a motion? and Regina. Ken and Regina. Okay, discussion or questions? I have a question. <coughs> <clears throat> I don't want to say anything that's going to make it sound like um, I'm not in favor of this program. I think it's a great program. Um, but I'm just curious if there are other companies that want to get in on this, what, what do they need to do? So we did a formal bid process this year that we posted it um, for public bid and they need to submit a bid bid to the city what are, what kind of things do we look for in those bid proposals uh, is off it the only top dollars of my head I don't have that information there's about eight to ten criteria that we analyze it we One have of a them panel is having of a history of having renovated a certain number of houses before is that true and selling them not renting Yes, so I mean I can rattle off the ones I remember off the top of my head okay. So how much they're going to invest per property if they're going to sell to homeowner occupants or rent them um, What their average? Um, investment is in the property um, Overall all the properties that they receive their qualifications their financial qualifications um, Experience they've had doing this type of work before experience some of the <sighs> Timeline to have right. some yeah, their timeline. Materials used, quality yep, of work. Yep, materials used, quality of work. Community so support. there's several. So if there's factors. a wonderful builder who has only built two houses, and there's another one who has a history of building 50 houses, you might go with the one that has done more work like that. So what happens is we have all of those factors that we analyze it over. Um, and then we have a panel of five people who do review each proposal individually. And who is on the panel? So we have um, Council Member Weiss, Assistant City Manager Kevin Yee, Technical and Planning Director Rob Barrett, um, Colton Dale out of the Community and Economic Development Department, and then myself. Pretty competent team. Yeah. So we analyze it over several factors. Um, so just because one person may not have as much experience in one area doesn't mean they wouldn't be selected. It just depends on how much they rate over all of the items that we look at and how each individual person um, scores them. And how do you decide? I noticed this time, uh, at, at one time we gave it the, the whole project to the winning uh, bidder, and this time we're dividing it uh, two thirds to FPJ and one third to HP SNAP. How is it decided how to much divide to give? them, and how did you decide two thirds, one third? Um, so in our consultation with our city attorney's office, HP SNAP is a new company that we have not used yet. And we do have a couple vacant lots in this that we required new builds on. Um, and we felt that the experience that uh, FPJ has had makes them better qualified to take the, those two vacant lots. So they're going to get a bulk of that because of that um, consultation with the city attorney's office. Madam Mayor. Man, man, yes, man. Uh, there's several questions. <coughs> um, Just quick Ken point. Rich. Sorry. As a procedural matter, I believe that this board, this council, has already voted some weeks or months ago as to the vendors who are going to get this. No, we didn't? No. Okay. <coughs> so I, thought, I thought we had. All right. Uh, two vendors who came uh, up um, and presented. Man and then uh, Council Member Weiss. I said a point of order. Um, the this discussion is good, but I think it pertains more to the, the following I, agenda 15 item. 15I yeah. instead of, yeah. yeah. That's true. They're, true. they're, they're related, so yep. I just kind of jumped it, the gun. They, right. They sort of um, discuss them in a clump. Okay. <coughs> I can wait till 15I. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ready to vote then? Uh, so this is on uh, a, a resolution approving the purchase of these properties. And I, I'm sorry, can yes. I add a comment too? I do want to say, in comment to this agenda item, I do think this is a great program that the city does because otherwise these are these are properties that could be uh, bought up by people just trying to make a quick buck, do a cheap flip, yep. fill it with renters, and this way we make sure that these are 
the quality work is done and it's occupied by owner occupied occupants at the end of it I mean, that was the whole well said yep I think before we got to this program uh, after the 2008 uh, financial crisis there were companies in uh, abroad and in California that brought clumps of properties did minimal fixing painted them put in new carpet and then rented them for at high rates and it did not help our city did not help our city and so this this I'm I'm sold on this program thank you do we did we vote no got to vote this is on approving the purchase mayor pro tem radner yes council member rich yes council member weiss yes council member burns yes mayor P mcclellan yes uh, motion carried and then the, we're on the related I yep. you know, that we have been questioning I before. But is the resolution to approve the sale of the tax foreclosed properties, which is what we've already begun discussing. Um, we have selected through our bid process and panel of um, reviewers to go with um, the bidders of FPJ and HP Snap. Again, um, working with our city attorney's office, we are recommending what's in front of you that two thirds going to FPJ and one third going to HP Snap. Um, and then there's a whole list of stipulations that we want to be in the contract. Our city attorneys could recommend others to be added, mm -hmm. um, but this gives us the opportunity to sell them and the city manager's office to sign any contracts in relation to that. Right, right. Um, uh, other cities have had bad um, experiences because they didn't have this kind of agreement. Um, things were bought and left lay for years which isn't good for the neighborhood. Lots of, um, uh, lots of potential problems that can be solved by careful contracting. Thank you. Yes. The program um, has had a lot of positive results in the fact that uh, I believe when we began the program, our, the amount of rentals we had in the city of Oak Park was at 48%. I believe that number is down to 41. Um, and then also our property values have gone up in the double digits the last two to three years. That's great. Well, we love our renters, but um, uh, n nothing against renters. Uh, we need a um, uh, motion to approve the resolution approving the, uh, the, the purchase. So moved. Second. Oh, the sale. I'm sorry. Misspoke. I have a question. And then we've got a question, yeah. Mayor Pro Tem. I waited till 15. I. <laughs> How many properties is it? I'm sorry. Say that. How again. many properties is it? This year? Yeah. We have seven. Okay, seven. With one that's iffy. What's two thirds of seven? I never learned that. <laughs> two thirds, well, seven's hard to divide that way. Right. So, yeah, so it's that, going to be a little, how many are going little to difficult. We'll split a house in, in a, into a third. Oh, so, so one property is going to be owned by both? No, I, I was kidding. I'm sorry. No, that's, no. Why, I, that's why I'm really wondering. Yeah. Those seven, I'll have to work that to? out with our city, um, city attorney. Um, there's going to be one that we're not going to sell um, at the very beginning because it's still being looked at on whether or not they will pay. I think they have till the end of July to make their payments so according to a court six. order. <coughs> so we won't be selling that one right away. We're going to wait and see what happens. So. so how could we have just voted to buy seven properties if only six are currently for sale? It's for No, all seven are for sale, but we've had issues in the past with um, properties going to court. Um, the they're still parents. going through the tax foreclosed process um, and offered as right of first refusal. If we don't purchase them now, it will go to auction if they don't pay their taxes. We want to make sure that we um, purchase it if it does become available. So, it, so at, at it, uh, whatever point in time that that seventh property we end up taking possession of, is there going to be another resolution before us to give it to a company? No. No, this gives um, the authority to the city manager to ne negotiate any contracts. With those two companies? Correct. Okay, so this is what I wanted to bring up. If there are other companies that want to get involved in this. They should uh, bid next year. So they should bid next year, but here's mm -hmm. my, my real question. If we have seven properties, there's obviously a lot of properties. This is a very nice program that we have, but, and I'm not just saying this because, you know, we've got five candy bars, let's give them to five people, but we kind of do. We kind of do have seven candy bars here. This is something that probably every real estate developer would love to have. 
why not try to give a property or two to every qualified company that presents itself to the city instead of just picking the one or two most qualified and giving it to them based on whatever criteria we have? I think I can answer that. If you have seven cases in your law firm, why don't you just give them to seven qualified attorneys or give them all to you, the most qualified attorney? <laughs> the other thing, too, is um, the people that we select are buying all these properties sight unseen, and there has been instances that they don't make any money on the um, property because it costs so much um, to renovate it, and then the price that they sell it for, they haven't actually made any money. So we want to encourage people to continue doing this program with us, and if each person just got one property, one person could potentially get stuck with something that they're going to lose money on, and I don't think that that's fair for us to put anybody in that situation. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is that you accept all of the properties. <coughs> I think we had 15 at one time, mm -hmm. from the very best plum properties to the worst um, yeah. that you can't just cherry pick the good ones yeah and building a new home on a vacant lot is expensive these days so a lot of times in those instances sometimes money is not made and if, okay. but, but if home, value, home values are doing very very well in the city right now yes now. because they, they are <laughs> so a building costs going up too I, I, I just want to make sure we're being fair yeah. that's all that's all Madam Mayor. that's yeah, all I'm doing yeah <coughs> that's any fair? further yeah. I, yes. I just wanted to add to you I think these are um, these are investments in the city, so we want to make sure that the companies that we as a city are, are selling these properties to are putting the best quality work possible into them and turning them around in a reasonable timeline in a way that we would expect them to. So I don't know that the best scenario um, to uh, Councilman Ranner's point is to just give them out to everyone who applies. That's, that, that's not what I said. Well, you have I said to every everybody <laughs> qualified instead okay. of to the one or two most qualified. What I'm saying is if, if 20 companies submit bids, and four we think are really good, but two of them have six points better based on whatever criteria we, com we came up with that day. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the other companies are not qualified and won't do a great job and shouldn't be given a chance. I, that, that's all I'm saying. And, and I, I love the work that FPJ has done. I really do. I love seeing those slides. And I, it's something that I enjoy every, whenever it is we do it uh, several times throughout the year. I, I love seeing what they're doing with the properties. It's just that as a government body who's, who's basically giving profits to private companies. I want to make sure we're doing it as, as fairly and as, as, uh, to as many different uh, mayor, companies as possible, so yes. long as we know they'll do a good job. Since and Council so, Member yeah, Rich. Yeah, since Solomon Radner is so excited about this, I think he, he should volunteer his time for the committee that, <laughs> that meets to, to review all of these projects and to review all of the vendors. I think you should. Maybe we'll put him on the committee next time, right? Thank you. Thank you for the great suggestion. It's like you've got so much to say, you're on the committee, right? Part, Thank you. Part of being the government is that we just get to tell everybody else what to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amen. Where are we? We're voting on this? Okay. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. <coughs> yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. It's symbolic, but I'm going to vote no. Okay. That's okay. You are entitled. You don't have to go with the flow. Madam Mayor, members of council, that completes the city manager report for this evening. Thank you. Next, we have call to the audience. Yes, please come up. Tell us who you are and... We know who this is. <laughs> well, for, for those... We've of, been talking about you. Those of us who are not regulars. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and council. Uh, I, let me first say I want to thank you for the opportunity. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jim Budziak with FPJ Investments. Um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity uh, that you're giving me to work with you again this year. Um, and I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, I appreciate uh, Council Member Radner's comments. And, and it is a legitimate concern of a, of a government body to make sure that the city is getting the the, the most bang for their buck. But what I would say is, uh, to Kim's point, um, we kind of take a global approach where you don't know the condition of the properties because you haven't been in the properties. And kind of in my generic presentation that I give to a lot of communities or land banks wherever I am, 
as I say, a lot of times one-third of the profit properties we're going to lose money on, one-third we may break even, and one-third is where we make our money. So in theory, the problem is if you gave one property, one property, one property, to Kim's point, you, it's hard to know which properties are going to be profitable until you get into them. And you may set somebody up uh, to lose a lot of money on a given property, whereas the advantage to doing it the other way is, let's say I'm going to get four properties and two of them are in better shape than, than, than the other two. I'm still willing to put the 40 or 50 or 60,000 in, into that other property and possibly lose money, like I did on the new constructions. I lost money on the new constructions um, this year. So th you know, that's the advantage to kind of limiting it. Many communities are limiting it to, to two developers. Um, and so uh, the other thing is, I would say, you know, not to pick a fight, but like, for example, you could take that approach with everything. Are you going to use 15 different sidewalk contractors? Mm -hmm. So the, the yeah, problem right is there. you get economies of scale mm -hmm. and you get a better bid and a better price. And we're able to uh, market ourselves to the contractors with economies of scale. When I, especially if I'm going to build a couple of houses, it's hard for me to get a contractor to, to come over and just dig one basement. If I tell the contractor I have two basements or three basements to dig, because I'm competing with Pulte, right, or Centex or whoever, where the, the excavator pulls up and they say, dig 30 basements. Yeah. It's hard for me to get the guys over, so I have to overpay and, and do different things. And, and I will say, you know, I don't want to sell against myself, but the other developers selected, I've been working with them and against them for a long time, and, and it is a good company. So. That's it. Thanks again for the opportunity. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Hi. Uh, give us your name and address. Thank you. Merlin Taylor. It's reference 15160 and 15161 Kenwood. To your honor, pro tem, counselors. Good evening. Good evening. I'm responding to the two letters I received last week uh, regarding the properties. Again, it's 15161, 15160 Kenwood, regarding the cement that was completed in 2018. And I addressed the complaint, I believe this was about a month ago. We have a, a three-minute... Um, okay. Yep. Well, I want to address this letter. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be brief, hopefully. Um, and it, it says that uh, the assessment was done again, but I beg to differ with the assessments. Um, there is still water public uh, puddling in the areas that was completed. I do have... Uh, um, and the thumb drive, some of the photos that I can show you, and also the chips that was done uh, with the cement last year that was supposed to have been done but was not. There were a couple of issues with that regarding chips. I pointed out to the person who came out uh, doing the second assessment last month by the name of Dan. He said he'll take care of that, but did not. He didn't get back with me uh, regarding those issues. This is pointed out during the 2018 assessment after the concrete was done, repaired. Um, again, the problems still exist and how it was brought to my attention to have the sidewalks assessed. Initially, when I called, I asked him what what was a procedure in order to get the concrete, well, take a look at the concrete and the uneven areas. This is in 2017. 2018 come around, I observed two people, one name was Dan and the other person was female, forgot her name, and came out and marked the areas where I guess needed to be assessed. And then approximately perhaps 20 days later, there were the concrete companies that come out and they did the work. Now, I did not 
ask that the city come out and repair the sidewalks. I just asked for an inquiry regarding the issue. But I got for the city, from the city to come out and repair it. I could have got assessments from different companies, but I did not. So I felt that it was shoved down my throat regarding the repair if you, um, and I have to pay for it. Finish up your sentence. Yes. And, okay. And then when you're so, done, if you would see the gentleman, the second gentleman at the end, uh, Director Barrett. Okay, Mr. Barrett. So therefore, I think that what I received is not is still incomplete um, regarding the the pulling of water, along with the chips on the property, you know, on the sidewalk. If you would. Um, uh, please speak to Director Barrett and thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, hi, my name is Lisa LeBlanc and my address is 23837 Forest Street. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and the Council, I just wanted to um, express my appreciation for the um, proclamation of the, I'm nervous, <laughs> National uh, Gun Violence Awareness Day. I came last year and asked and sort of sprung it on you guys and there was some discussion and you needed to think about it some more and I appreciate you thinking about it and bringing it up again uh, tonight. Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, an issue of concern for all of us and we're hoping for <coughs> resolution. Anybody else? Quiet group. All right, um, Mayor Pro Tem Redner. <clears throat> a lot to talk about tonight. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about just one thing that we voted on, uh, piggybacking off of what Lisa just talked about a moment ago. That is the resolution that we made about gun violence. I'm kind of thinking out loud right now. I don't know if what we did tonight by voting for that proclamation will have any good. I don't know if it was meaningless or if it's just politicians giving themselves a pat on the back and feeling good about ourselves. I, I, I really kind of went back and forth on this today. What's the point? Are we jump-starting a conversation? Um, are, are we jump-starting a mature, apolitical conversation in which we're actually driving towards uh, solutions? And instead of just repeating talking points? Or, like I said, are we just doing what everybody else is doing? Everybody else is doing, all the other cities are doing it, let's do it too. Otherwise, we, we look like jerks. I don't know. I don't know if there's any good that's going to come of what we voted for tonight. My hope, and it's with cautious optimism, is that if enough cities do this, both from cities that are predominantly conservative and predominantly liberal, if there's, enough, uh, if there's enough discussion that's being created on both sides of the aisle, which, because sadly this has become a political issue, if there's enough conversation that's being uh, forced to be had by everybody, then maybe there is some hope in the future. That's the last comment that I have on that matter. Thank, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, Council Member Burns. Thank you everyone for coming out and normally I don't do this but I agree with Solomon. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, a, it's a wonderful symbol but what is it going to do? I believe that the actions start with the individuals and being accountable and having access to the guns. So I don't believe what we did today will really make a difference because it's not prohibiting anything. It's more symbolic in my opinion. So I think every person needs to take responsibility for themselves. That's where the change will come. Thank you for coming out. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Um, Council Member Weiss. Good evening everyone. Um, so I guess I'll comment on that as well. Uh, I, first of all, thank you for everyone who came out. Um, I see the few people in the audience who came out in support of that resolution and thank you particularly for speaking on it um, and coming out last year and bringing it to our attention. Um, I do think that words matter and though this isn't a, uh, we're not passing any legislation, it's just a resolution, I do think it's important to say as a city these are what our values are and this is, this is what we hope for our future. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. I have a couple of events that I just want people to know about. Uh, first off, um, 
Concerts in the Park start on June 20th, and they're every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Thornetta Davis is the first. 7.30, thank you. 7. I think I was, I don't know what I was reading. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> um, concerts in the Park start on June 20th at 7 p.m. at Shepherd Park. Thornetta Davis is the kickoff on June 20th. Um, also, the Farmer's Market starts the following week on Ju June 26th, and those are every Wednesday from 9 to 1. There are also a few um, Sunday markets as well, including one that just happened or kickoff last Sunday, which was wonderful. Um, so encourage people to attend that. Um, and the pool grand opening is on June 15th at 1 p.m. I know our library director mentioned there was a concert on Sunday. What time is it at? 2 p.m. concert at the library on Sunday. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Rich. Thank you all for coming. Have a good night. Um, I don't know how many of you came, but there was a mini farmer's market on Sunday. And um, the way it works is if, you, if we get a lot of people to come on Sunday, more of the vendors will want to come if they're making a profit and that kind of thing, if it's worth it for them. <clears throat> so um, it was wonderful. There were plants. There were hot dogs. There were f there was face painting. Um, uh, Humana was out there. Um, lots of things to pick from right in our neighborhood. Local people supporting local people. So uh, check your calendar uh, for when the markets are starting uh, at the end of. The last Wednesday this month and check once a month we have a Sunday and if we all come out and support that Sunday event maybe we'll have a regular Sunday event that's kind of how that's how the market kind of works so um, uh, one other thing I went to an event and gave a proclamation for Linda Moraine who has worked with um, uh, the uh, Detroit newspaper for 35 years and um, Mayor Duggan uh, had a, um, a proclamation also and we declared it Linda Moraine Day in the city of Oak Park. She's a long time uh, Oak Park resident and um, uh, has done wonderful things about getting kids involved as interns in the newspaper business and uh, helped the community in a lot of ways. So thanks, Linda. Um, I agree on the, the, the gun issue that we need a mature, apolitical, solution-driven discussion. And maybe this is the start. Because of this being on the agenda, I started looking into it a little bit more and found out that <clears throat> probably th more than three quarters of the gun deaths are by suicide. So that's not a discussion that we've had. We've had the, the big shooter incidents brought to our attention, but the majority uh, gun deaths are suicide. So there are lots of ways that we can deal with this by talking together and bringing up the issue is the beginning. So I thank you all for coming out and um, there being no further business to come before the council, this meeting is adjourned.
To arrive here for tonight's speeches, City Council members and the City Manager used various modes of public transportation. Tonight's short video highlights these various forms of public transportation, including the soon-to-be-expanded mobile